Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Some people are still connecting to audio. Welcome, good morning. It's good to see you all again. Thank you for being here. Okay, I, I let people unmute themselves. I'm sorry about that, I forgot. To... Great, great. It's okay, yeah. If you all wanna unmute and say something to one another or to us, you may. Good morning. All right. Julia, am I right that you're the DRE? Oh, Marnie says still cannot unmute. Mm. Oh, really? Y'all can't unmute. Okay. That's why you're being so silent. I'm like, what is going on? What? <laughs> you okay. should say unmute. People want to unmute. Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> please, try it. please try it again. I always like starting a session. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh. Yay. Yay. Good morning. Freedom. Woohoo. I can't do video because my battery will run out if I do. Oh. <laughs> All right, Bev. That's okay. Because it, it says nine, it says 10 to 2. And I thought, oh God, I'll never I'll never last four hours. Mm, right. I know, huh? And um, Summer, I was not here for the first session. Oh, That's okay. Me, Dina. Hi, Dina. But I assume it's okay to oh. loop on in to the second Absolutely. session. Absolutely. Yeah, I wasn't here either, so. Oh, okay. All right, Carolyn. Well, thank you. Welcome for, and we're so glad you're here today. Thank you. Good, good. All right. Well, Annie, I think I will share my screen to get Alrighty. us going. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bev says yes. Annie says yes. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. And here we are. Welcome. Welcome. Here. This is part two, but as we heard, some of you may not have been here for part one, and that's okay. We're so excited that you're here. So quite often, we um, like to invite you to rename yourselves um, by placing your pronouns next to your name if you're comfortable. Um, and as you are doing that, so you can see there's an example down there, right? So um, she, her, he, him, they, them, or any combination that feels good for you. You can see on that Annie and I both have our pronouns that we haven't put that we're UUA staff or we work for PWR. We forgot to do that, Annie. That's fine. Whatever. Yep. You all will know that. Some of you already are, already know that. Um, and then if you um, would like to, you can place in the chat one word about how you are entering the space today. We love to just sort of check in with everyone so everybody knows how you are, just one word, how you're entering the space this morning. And if, oh, Annie, it, um, I know you usually say something about if you need help or what have you, right? So if you, if you need help um, yep. with pronouns, you can let us know and we can try to help you. Or if you need, you know, if you're struggling with renaming yourself, adding pronouns, we can actually do that for you if you just let us know. Yeah. Oh, we're getting Annie. some good words. My pronouns okay. never stay there. I put my pronouns and then they go away. Mm. That sometimes happens to me too. Yeah. Yeah. They give you the option of changing your mind. Mm. There you go. There it is. That's a good one, Marnie. A little sleepy, interested, tired, frazzled, thankful for this beautiful morning, curious, awakening, ooh, with a cold, eager, still can't, oh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you for sharing, giving us a sense of, uh, oh, recovering from COVID. Oh, dear, Carolyn. Oh. I'm so sorry. So, Asta, this is Diana. 
Um, in the Zoom settings, there is an option to either have the pronouns always display or ask you or, you know, that is configurable. Thank you, Diana. That's a really important point. Where do I, so I just went to the rename here up in the corner of my picture. You, you, might, you might have to do it after the meeting if you go online. Yeah. To the yeah. your, to your profile online on the web page, you have more power there to do it. Thank you. All right, Annie. So uh, we wanted to first introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Annie Scott, and uh, as you can read, I'm a credentialed religious educator. I've worked in, in five different congregations over the country over 27 years and worked for the UUA for the Pacific Western region for three and a half years now, which has just been a joy and an honor and uh, work with a great team. And uh, so I, I, I would also like to say that uh, uh, I'm describe myself. So today, so I am a 70 year old woman with gray, gray hair, although I hate to admit that because there is some brown still there. Long brown hair, it's down today. Um, I wear brown glasses. I'm kind of fat. Um, I'm white. Um, and behind me is a bookcase and uh, a, a quilt, a thin quilt hanging. And then the other side, I have a Sankofa bird which is from a tribe in Ghana and invites us to both look back and look forward. Summer? Mm, thank you, Annie. That's beautiful. Hello, everyone. I am the Reverend Summer Elbeati. She, her pronouns. I reside in Southern California in Corona, which is the sacred land of the Juaneño and Luiseño. And it is so good to be here. It is sunny which is lovely. I know we all had rain in California, so it's nice to get some sun. Yay. Yesterday I, I went outside when the when it had, it had rained in the morning and then by the afternoon, I think there was some sunshine and I sat outside for like five minutes and it was lovely. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, I, um, I, just so you know, I am uh, Iraqi and um, Muslim Unitarian Universalist, so I am fasting for Ramadan. So Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Um, and so if you, you know, see me going, ah, you know why? Uh, because I'm not eating, I'm not eating, so, you know, um, anyway, I will try my best to be up and, and have a lot of energy. I'm an energetic person, so I, I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, but you never know, because by the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I'm dying here. But it's good. It's good. It's good. You've got to have to be steadfast. We call that sabad, patience, resilience, steadfastness, persistence, right? That's, that's what we are um, striving to do, patience and faith. So um, anyway, I, um, I also um, have um, dark brown hair that gets some gray, but I use henna to try to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will once in a while do a little henna because I don't like it, but it's fine. Someday I'll, I'll like it. Um, but anyway, I, uh, um, and I'm wearing glasses and sometimes I'll put them on and sometimes I won't. So like, I don't necessarily think I need them right now, but I have them on just because I'm trying to get used to them. Um, and I am wearing a brown sweater and a little, um, uh, oh God, what color is this? Like a, like a mm, orangey rusty, um, color as well. And um, in back of me is a painting. You see this painting in back of me? This is a painting of um, New Mexico. Uh, um, the um, um, I lived in New Mexico for a few years and my family would, we would, they had property there. So I would go back and forth for, you know, probably 30 years. And so it's a, a big part of my heart is New Mexico. Um, this um, would be um, uh, the from Acoma Pueblo, um, uh, and so the Acoma Pueblo they live on. They have a 
a mesa that they live on top of that's called Sky City. And so this would be a rendition of what that looks like. Um, if you ever get to New Mexico and are you near Grants and Albuquerque, in between Grants and Albuquerque on the I-40, I strongly um, urge you to go see Sky City. It's gorgeous. Um, and it also is reminiscent of um, housing in IDOC. So when my father was growing up there, during the summertime when it is hottest, because you know it can get to be 120 degrees, things like that, right? Um, they would sleep on top of the roof there, and so they have flat roofs, so you know, like a little courtyard up there. So anyway, yeah, okay. I think that's it. I want to keep it 100 here. I have been to um, both of those places, Iraq, yeah, and to um, was a place in the in New Mexico. Grants. Grants, Grants. Grants, yeah. so Grants. you've been, been to Grants? Nice. Grants, yeah, yeah Acapulco's near Grants, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I want to keep it 100. You get the new picture, Summer, because your picture has different hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and different, um, no glasses. Uh, no so glasses, I know. I could I could take my glasses off and then reveal. Okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. Just, <laughs> fine. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this was, you know, this is a... a Sure, when I'd gone to the salon and used to do highlights and, you know, and get my hair straightened and la, 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 and that's when I got the picture taken yeah. by a wonderful director of music at my home congregation. So, yeah, Beth Cypress and Nakao. So, all right. Let us continue. So we have an agenda for today. Um, so we, um, as you can see, we're at agenda now, and then we're going to talk about our covenant for today. Um, we will do um, a chalice lighting, and then we are going to go into um, talking about some key things, four key things, intent versus impact, unconscious bias, and then we will have lunch, and there will be some breaks, so, you know, you don't have to wait till lunch to take a break. We'll have some quick breaks for you. Centering, we'll come back from lunch and do a little centering. And then we'll talk about power dynamics and revisit interim ministry again and, and do a little bit more in, with regard to interim ministry. And then you'll give us some of your ahas, closing and gratitudes. So that is what's going to happen today from 10 to 2. And lunch is about a 30-minute lunch, just so you know. And we have a covenant that we propose, and we proposed last time, um, that your PWR UUA staff, PWR stands for Pacific Western Region at the Unitarian Universal Association. That is us, Annie and myself, and, and a wonderful team. Um, the, the first one is my favorite, and um, that is have fun. So got to have fun, always have fun, no matter what we're doing, even if we're going deep and and um, talking about some deep things we need to that challenge us, we need to have some fun with that. Um, we want you to be welcoming and inclusive. Um, bring openness, creativity, and flexibility. Um, that's important. We've got to be flexible um, as much as we can. Deeply listen to each other's stories. Deep listening is something that, you know, we're always like texting or watching something or, you know, we're trying to multitask. We need to really focus and deeply listen to one another's stories. Be fully present with your heart and your head, right? Sometimes we can be present with one and not the other. So let's try to use both and connect the two. Bring confidence and humility. Sometimes we can lean on being either confident or humble, and we need to bring a balance of the two. Um, let all voices be heard. So take space, make space. So if you are somebody who holds back and doesn't really speak a lot, take up your space. We want to hear from you. And if you are somebody who talks a lot, who can, you know, I got the answer, I got the answer. I'm one of those people. I always have the answer, right? Um, me, 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 call on me. Make space for some others. Sit back, let them answer that question or what have you, or say something. You might be surprised that they're thinking just what you're thinking. So support one another in love, respect, and care. Confidentiality. Share your reactions, not other stories, right? The stories are to be told by the person of who belongs to that story. So share your reactions only. Honor different cultures, styles, paces, and needs. 
And remember that intent and impact are not the same thing, and we'll talk more about that later. Get curious, not furious. When times get rough, turn to wonder, unless furious is what those times call for. All right. So um, if you could let us know by either putting in the chat, agree to the covenants or um, doing a thumbs up or whatever um, works for you. I see some thumbs up. If you agree. Agree. Yeah. You can I agree. don't know how to do chat. So that's oh, okay, why. Okay. Yeah. Started. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever works for you. So, all right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Let us continue. Annie, would you like me to stop sharing slides, Annie? Annie, you're muted. Thank you. And yeah, that'd be great to close them. So we are a community of faith. You are a community uh, of faith, and we are all members of the larger faith. And as such, we always like to begin grounding ourselves in faithful words. And so would invite you, oh, just kind of feel your body this morning, be present in it. Um, I like this chalice. And brought to you this morning words of Reverend Marta Valentin, um, who has this wonderful little book, uh, of prayer or meditations. It's one of the meditation mm -hmm. in. So this is a this is a reading called Waiting. Step into the center. Come in from the margins. I will hold you here. Don't look back or around. Feel my arms. The water is rising. I will hold you as you tremble. I will warm you. Don't look out or away. Life is in here between you and me. In this tiny space where I end and you begin, hope lives. In this precious tiny space, no words need to be whispered to tell us we are one. You and I make the circle if we choose to. Come, step in. I am waiting for you. Amen. And may that ground us in the sacred relationships we have. So uh, I just want to start, we wanted to start by um, just kind of giving you a sense of what, what we're about today, what our intentions are. So Summer and I were with you in November uh, for a startup sermon, for a startup workshop, and then uh, uh, the next day a sermon. And we ran out of time on Saturday to talk about uh, a segment uh, about following leadership of of, of people of color. So Dr. XK and Ram, your president, uh, invited us back for a part two. And so we hope to provide opportunities to stretch and grow in the next four hours in between our breaks. And we hope to leave you with uh, things to think about, um, invitations to do personal uh, internal reflection, Becoming a truly liberating faith for everyone is a long-term process. In order to improve our ability to be strong followers, we need to undo some learnings, rethink some assumptions, and learn some new things. So as we move through our day today, invite you to think about the topics we're using and how might that invite, what that might invite in you um, as you uh, are in a, in, in, a, in a sacred opportunity to follow leaders of color, both as your president and in, uh, in, your, in your interim minister. So we undo learnings, we rethink some assumptions, we learn new things, and then we practice and we practice and we practice. 
Some of the things we will talk about today will be new to some of you and repeats for others. So today is an invitation to stretch and grow and to forge new relationships and deepen other relationships, strengthening the fabric of your congregation. So first we wanna talk about impact and intention. So here's a definition that, that, that we hope will be helpful. Intent is what you aim to achieve through an action. And impact is how a person or community receives that action. So intent is your aim, what you're hoping to accomplish. And then of course, there's the other side of it. There's the other side of it, which is how that, how that person or that community receives that action. Um, so imagine you tell a joke and it's hurtful. Your intent was to be funny, lighten the mood perhaps, build some, some fun and joy between people, but the impact was harm. Imagine you tell Imagine you tell me a story of how someone was aggressive towards you, and I act as if it's no big deal. Imagine someone has a new friend from a different country with a cuisine that's very different than what you're used to. This new friend invites you over them, them over to dinner to enjoy a traditional meal they've prepared so they can so that you can try their cuisine for yourself. The invited friend takes a bite and says, whoa, this is actually good. Well, the invited friend's intention was to pay a sincere compliment. The person who cooked feels like it was a subtle dig in their culture and their food. So part of the work we are doing as Unitarian Universalists is we are learning to center, learning a new cultural focus, learning to center on the impact of our behaviors rather than our intentions. What happens when we center intention? We focus on explaining ourselves and how we didn't mean to harm or we act as if the person is overreacting to their lived experience and we downplay it. However, when we make the shift and we center the impact, we center the voices of those harmed and we listen to their stories so we can learn to become a beloved community. So it is about miscommunication. So I'm wondering how you feel when, you say, when what you say is taken the wrong way. What could happen to someone's feelings when your intent is different from the impact? What are some contributing factors to such miscommunication and misunderstanding? So we'd like to send you off into our first breakout session. And uh, Summer, did we figure out we want to have... Um, uh, we want to have a, a group, a breakout group for uh, people who identify as people of color um, so that non-people of color feel free to, to speak honestly and openly without harming, harming those people. We can do our practicing and our thinking and our honest, honest uh, transformation. Um, and so, uh, Summer, are you setting up the breakout rooms? Um, Annie, I have not set up breakout rooms. Um, I can, but I would have to know who, or Ram, maybe you could help me with this, who might want to um, be in the BIPOC room. I wonder. Okay. Uh, I can help with the breakout rooms as far as who might want to be in the BIPOC room. Um, maybe 
you can post in the chat. Um, I, I certainly will be. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If anyone else. Um, yeah, would... you can send a message to um, Ram or to me um, so that we can place you in that room right. when we're setting this up. Right. So maybe we might take some time to reflect on those questions that I put in the chat okay. while we do that. I don't think that I um, no, went to the breakout rooms last time. No, no, we don't want you to. Thank you, Kalani. I appreciate you asking. Yeah. And Ram? Uh, no, Tamara. I'm sorry. Tamara is staff? My spouse. No, she's my spouse. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, Tamara. Um, yeah, that's probably good, too. Um, so I think we have 24 people. So let's do, um, we usually do groups of three, three or four, three to four depending on yeah. what's easiest. Yeah. And, and if we have some... more BIPOC, then they just go in the, that room. Yeah. 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 So, um, we're going to give you 15 minutes which we have figured will be about three minutes each. So uh, you don't have to answer all the questions. Choose the one that 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 sparks the most in you. And as as Summer uh, said when she was talking about our, our, our covenant, if you're extroverts like she and I, and you think out loud, be very mindful that you have three minutes. And, um, and if you are an introvert or a person who needs to time to think, you can use part of your time to sit quietly and invite other people to let people have that time to think. We want to get the best from everyone. Okay. So how close are we to being being able to start breakouts? Um, I think I'm ready to go. Um, okay. I uh, There is a request from Carol and Bob, can can the questions be on the screen? Sure, you'd like me to, uh, I put them in the chat and I will share my screen again so you can see them. Does that sound good? But the when you go is, into the breakout, it you they won't be on the screen anymore. But I'll we'll, share my we'll screen post, now. We'll post it again to the breakout rooms just to make sure that you all, um, that you all can see them. Um, true, and that doesn't help for somebody like me. I don't know about you all. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I can't see that. It's so teeny tiny. They need to make those messages larger is all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So these are the questions. Okay. Let, let me know when we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Okay. I love that. Love that, Nika. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Yeah. So um, let's just take a few minutes. Let's take a few minutes to share a few things. So um, if you would be willing to uh, unmute and share, you know, what was a particular insight you had? Um, was something sparked in you in the conversation as you thought about it? Who would be, who'd be willing to share with the group? Or you could write something in the chat. That would be fine, too. Any brave souls? Yes, yeah, Susan? Uh, one, of the, one of the main themes that ran through a lot of our experiences was uh, we got into trouble when we made assumptions and assumed instead of asking the other side uh, what their... Uh, you know, what they wanted or how they felt. Wonderful. Yeah. That old thing about assumptions, huh? Thank you, Susan. Who else? Yeah, Sally. So one point that came up in ours, uh, you know, somebody was reminding us that they, they uh, if they uh, make that kind of mistake of saying something that uh, was hurtful to somebody, ask them, them to tell more rather than it's so easy to just jump into uh, feeling, uh, you know, thinking about our own embarrassment, but a way to, yes. to focus yes. on them, ask them to say more. 
Yes. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Sally. I love that. I mean, it, it, it's it can, it's a practice, right? That helps reframe it and retrain ourselves. So I love that. Can you tell me more? Who else? Who else will share something they got from the conversation? Yeah, Marnie. Sorry about that. Something that um, struck me enough that I took notes. Dina said, um, every time there's an awareness, there's a break in patterns. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I, I actually was bringing it to what happens when I see in a group setting that there's a mismatch between intent and impact. Do I say anything or not? And how do I say anything? And even if I say nothing out loud and say it to myself, the awareness breaks the yeah. pattern in me. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. Oh, thank you, Dean. Both of those, both of those are great points. That sense of uh, your awareness is fundamental to that, to the relearning and the changing, and and then the question of what, when, when do you see, when do you say something? Dina, were you raising your hand? Yeah. Yes, um, and that the kind of the the other part of that was um, a term that I just learned when I participated in a UC alumni uh, Zoom training last month on uh, becoming inclusive workspace. Um, but uh, that it was the first time I, I uh, learned about or heard or thought about they use the term rather than being an ally, being an, be an accomplice, accomplice. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, and that that's a more act, active, uh, an active role of addressing mm -hmm. um, oppressions or microaggressions or, or whatever that, that there's a value, like uh, Marnie said, of just being aware of, of observing something but if we can right. step out of our comfort zone to be an accomplice and and say, uh, you know, the way you said that might be hurtful to someone um, or, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Or, you know, even can you, you know, reframe the way you're saying that. Yeah. Actively yeah. saying, uh, intervening in a situation rather than just yeah. observing and and. It can be our own benefit to observe, but if we step out of the comfort zone to say something, we're being an accomplice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dina. I love that. And um, so sometimes, sometimes what I have said is, can we just take a minute? Because I'm feeling uncomfortable. Um, because, you know, sometimes I need time to kind of um, what is it that's going on in me that's, uh, you know, itchy or gritchy or whatever? So, um, uh, gonna, oh, we have, let's take one more hand, um, Carol and Bob, and then we'll move along. Yeah. Our group talked about making assumptions. When you are saying something, you're making an assumption that that other person needs your help. Right. And without finding out, do they really need your help or that's just your assumption? They they do. Yeah. So checking that, che checking out, um, checking out that assumption rather than just acting. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you, Carol. So uh, we'd like to show you this very short uh, little video on microaggressions. Uh, Dina, thank you for raising that. And uh, I do need to, I do need to, you know, do a language warning that there is some cursing in this. Um, so, you know, if you need to turn off the sound because that will, uh, you know, bother you, then then go ahead and do that. Does it's not very long. So, uh, summer.
for people who still don't think that microaggressions are a problem. Oh, you're so well-spoken. Oh. Just imagine, instead of being a stupid comment, a microaggression is a mosquito bite. Ugh, it's a compliment. <laughs> mosquito bites and their itch are one of nature's most annoying features. But if you're only bitten every once in a while... No, where are you really from? Uh, Cleveland? Sure, it's annoying, but it's not that big a deal. The problem is that some people get bitten by mosquitoes a lot more than other people. I mean, a lot more. Whether it's on a date... Oh, your English is so good. Excuse me? Going grocery shopping. You know, everything happens for a reason. I'm just buying apples. Commuting to work. So when are you gonna have a baby? Watching TV. We have to keep the Redskins name. It's part of our culture and history. Or just walking down the street with your partner. I couldn't even tell you were gay. <sighs> Mosquitoes seem to pop up everywhere. Do you know John? Can you give me shopping so advice? Bad I don't know shared too. And getting bit by mosquitoes every goddamn day. Can I touch your hair? Multiple times a day. It's so pretty. Can I touch your hair? Annoying. That makes you want to go ballistic on those mosquitoes, which seems like a huge overreaction to people who only get bit every once in a while. It's just a mosquito bite. Who cares? Just another angry black woman. Of course, beyond just being annoying, some mosquitoes carry truly threatening diseases that can mess up your life for years. Astrophysics. Hmm, maybe you should try this challenging major. Ow, oh, my dreams. And other mosquitoes carry strains that can even kill you. It looked like you was up to trouble, okay? I felt threatened. So next time you think someone's overreacting, <coughs> remember, some people experience mosquito bites all the time. You're all so exotic, wow. And by mosquito bites, we mean microaggression. So, so I would just invite you, uh, whether you're someone who experiences microaggressions throughout your day, multiple, or you're someone who has never noticed them, or perhaps you get one or two in, in, in a time period, would just invite all of you to just notice how you're feeling as you watch that, as you watch that little video. Just notice <coughs> where in your body what you're feeling and where it's where it's residing just taking a minute to notice and just wondering did you have aha moments did something shift in you or did you have mm moment so we we leave a question of how can we get better at not committing microaggressions. Thank you all. Summer? Thank you, Annie. So maybe you've seen this before. Um, we have a slide here um, that has an iceberg. Um, and the iceberg concept of culture. So within Unitarian Universalist congregations, we want to co-create, we want to um, we want to be together and become very, very multicultural, right? Um, and that means we need to deal with different cultures in order to do that. Most of what we define as culture is only 10% of the iceberg. So you see this top here, above the water is the 10% of the iceberg, right? The majority of the iceberg is underneath the water, right? So we see that, um, that we have on the top, you might have an awareness of culture, right? The, in, with literature and the fine arts, drama, the music, right? Dancing, games, cooking, how somebody dresses, right? Um, but those the, that are primarily... Oh, I'm sorry, yes? Did you have something to say? Did you, were you asking a question? No, I'm just noticing the one, rules of descent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are That's underneath, right? That's underneath the iceberg, rules of descent, right? Like, that's, that's really good. You wouldn't necessarily know that about um, a culture, right? Um, and you can see there's some others here, like um, uh, patterns of superior, subordinate relations, um, relationship to an animals, courtship practices, 
conceptual conception of status, mobility, theory of disease, right? Um, what what is the definition of insanity? That's cross culturally, that's different, right? Um, than what we might see in our um, American culture. And I just say American. I'll say with quotes, right? What the Western um, sense of that might be, right? Um, and so you see, there's all these different ways of of experiencing culture that we all bring, right? Um, and so when we are trying to come together as a congregation, we have different cultures that we're bringing, right? And mostly we see what's up here, or we think we know about a culture based on this, but there's all of this underneath, right? That we may not know. So, and that is the potential for conflict, right? This underneath is a potential for conflict. So we think about the Titanic, right? You know, that ship that sank, what happened? I love the movie, y'all. I love the movie. <laughs> so great. I love the movie. So anyway, but we're going to, we're going to not think of the movie, but the movie helps us to think what happened. The iceberg, they hit the iceberg, right? Underneath. And yeah. that's when things went very, very bad. So uncovering what's beneath the iceberg is the task of multicultural transformation. And Annie and I hold that portfolio together as Pacific Western Region staff um, at the UUA. And that is something that we're very passionate about. And so how do we uncover what's beneath the iceberg and really get to know everyone's cultures and so and and to understand right like like i may have a conception of a conception of justice that may be different right um or notions of leadership might be different roles in relation to status by age sex class occupation kinship etc might be different than yours right so and our congregations are already multicultural in a lot of ways right but but you know that's we define that as broadly. And so, you know, we still racially, ethnically, we still have a ways to go. So um, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment because Annie has a little story. So this is just, just to, an invitation to think about culture and what it is. Here's a little goofy story for you. When I went away to college, I'd never thought about the way toilet paper rolls. Um, I grew up, my family was an under, <laughs> under roller and had my first uh, roommate and, uh, you know, I put a roll of toilet paper on and she was, you know, said, what are you doing? And said it, you know, turned it over. And it was our first, I mean, it was an intense disagreement. Um, and it's one of those silly ones, but, uh, I raise it just to share with you over some silly, silly things. Um, when it comes to cultural differences, they sneak up on us and can, can surprise us. And so, uh, so we have another uh, uh, we have another example. Um, shall I just go ahead with this summer? Oh yeah, here's my here's my toilet paper. And oh by the way, when you see the blueprints of the when it was first. Uh, uh, copyrighted, the recommendation is the overway because it's less likely to get to get dirty. So my family did it wrong. I now do it correctly. So one of the differences, uh, another example of culture that was really harmful for me was that, um, you know, I grew up in the 50s, 60s and had two older brothers and two lovely parents who were very, their gender roles were very, very strict. And, um, you know, one day my dad was going to the side yard to play catch with my brothers. And I said, oh, can I play too? And he said, no, 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 you need to go be in the kitchen with your mom. And I have such a vivid memory of that. And then, of course, there were other times when he, when he said things like that too, that um, and part of what was harmful was that he was telling me that I didn't know what I wanted, so I couldn't trust myself. But he was clearly telling me what appropriate roles 
and and expectations and and longings were for me as a girl. Hey, Annie, that you know, I I think in terms of that, I juxtapose that with my own experience, right? My um my father was the chef in the family and did wow. all the cooking wow. from, primarily. My mom had some things that she made that I love, and she mm. you know. Yeah. I go, mom, I want that chocolate zucchini cake. And she's never made it for my son. Like, mom, mom. <laughs> but, you know, that's something for my childhood. But my father did like all the cooking. And so then we ended up having um, an Arabic nightclub because my father was a singer musician um, from Iraq who was very well known. Um, and um, so we ended up having a nightclub. And that is where I um, began playing um, the Arabic drum. Um, on stage professionally at the age of 12. And so my experience, right? So number one, that was something that was different, right? That, that, um, that I identified as female and my father was like, you need to be performing music with me. There was, you know, people might back at that, back at the, back in that day, um, there were not a lot of um, female drummers, right? Um, even in the wider American Western culture, there wasn't, right? Um, so, so that was something that was a little, little different. And, and the music is different, right? Um, and so the music is one in which we expect that that um, members of the audience are going to shout and express their emotions um, and, and move and clap and be very, very um, a part of what is happening. And they shape the music. They shape the, the if we're doing a concert, right? Like they shape the concert. Um, and they might say things like, you're killing me, you know, be, as we're bringing them, it's supposed to bring mm. them to their emotions so that they can, um, be connected back to their their homeland where they came from, right? Um, uh, the the mother mother um, land, and so that they can they can transform themselves, right? Um, at that time, and we help to do that as Arabic musicians. Mm. Now, my family, <clears throat> both my parents were musicians, and they met uh, when my mom. Uh, in college was the, was singing the lead in an operetta at University of Oregon, and they asked my dad to come in and be the first chair flautist. He was already teaching band in, in public schools. And how we were raised with classical music. And so you sat, you held still, you didn't respond until the piece was done. And then you applauded very politely, and then you were quiet again, and you didn't get up and walk around. Um, so uh, very, very different expectations about how it was to appropriately appreciate the musicians and the music. Just one more example of cultural difference. Absolutely. And and I I played Arabic classical music, right? So and the expectation was very different for classical music, yeah. right? Like you know you you would hear people saying things like Allah, you know, like God, you know, and they're they're out loud, right? And yeah. um, and clapping after every song versus in a Western classical music, I you know I sometimes I would clap and I'd be like, uh oh, nobody's clapping. Oops, I'm supposed to right. wait. Right. Apparently, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I have a memory also from my childhood. I grew up in uh, Columbus, Georgia, but moving back and forth between Columbus to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where my father was often uh, stationed as a military person in the Army. Mm -hmm. And we would usually go one year at a time back and forth to Columbus. And when we got back, um, I remember when I was the fourth or fifth grade, people started telling uh, my sister and I that we were proper mm. and that we had a different, uh, you know, way of speaking than people in our neighborhood. And um, they kind of uh -huh. looked at us with a bit of disdain. <laughs> but I remember mm -hmm. um, there were certain words that 
I just really couldn't articulate. I couldn't say y'all and I couldn't say ain't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, right. it took me a couple of years or so to try to work that into my vocabulary to um, be you know, better assimilated. Mm-hmm. But I don't know that we had any sense that we were talking any differently than anybody else, but people were very um, clear with us that um, we were and that they, I think they associated that with us being, um, you know, kind of uppity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you, wow. Dr. X. It is. Yeah. So I we were kind good. of a different culture within a within a culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have something somewhere similar to that. I grew up in California all my life. So for me, speaking to someone on the phone or someone that's not from here, I've always been called a valley girl or I talk like a white girl. I can't just be a well-spoken yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> person. Mm-hmm. I have to be. And still to this day, I still get that. Valley girl, you know, and like, and they, same thing, they think I'm better, they, I think I'm better, I have a more air about myself than they do, someone maybe from the South or something like that, that has more of an accent. I don't feel yeah. that way, but that's still, you know, mm-hmm. how it's viewed, just right. based off of the way that I sound. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I I had a, a, a boss, I was a, an educator, and he was from, um, the South, I've forgotten which state. And he came to California and on purpose got rid of his accent because people thought that Southerners were um, not as smart, right? right. And so he right. did that. And so every time I would say y'all, he would get a kick out of it because I'm not from the South. I say y'all to be more inclusive, to be gender inclusive right right? and so that's why I do it because I grow up saying you guys you guys you guys that's what I was taught right in California growing up here that that's what you say and so I switched to y'all on purpose and he just got a kick out of that because he was like I worked so hard not to have this accent and here you are bringing this accent in this one word you know anyway right Right. yeah It's, it's interesting so we have breakouts Annie yeah yeah So we're going to send you off into uh, more breakouts, uh, an opportunity to think about and talk about what we've raised. Welcome, welcome. So you all um, are coming back. And as we're coming back, we are going to, just so you know, because you came back early, we're going to have a little stretch break. So that's exciting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> back. It was a quick stretch break, but hopefully you got to stretch a little bit or get something to drink or go to the restroom or whatever you need to do. Give your child a hug. Uh-oh, did I do that? Uh-oh. I We talked, but I don't remember if I... Uh-oh. Note to self, next break, give my son a hug. All right. Because you can't have too many hugs, right? That's right. That's the way I look at it. So that's right. Yeah. All right. So Annie, you want we, me to share screen yet or no? Um, not quite. Okay. Um, we'd like to spend uh, some time before we break for thirty minutes for lunch, um, and just do some exploring together about unconscious bias. Um, You know, our brains are made to look for similarities, look for ways that we are alike, look for people who are like us. And um, so acting on unconscious uh, is what we're looking at, what we're looking, what we're inviting you to do some, to to do some uh, inner work reflecting on being aware of unconscious bias as you move through your days and your life and 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 acting on it because that's that's um where the harm to other people um comes about is when we act on our unconscious bias so we're going to look at at um five uh five kinds of unconscious bias in uh, certainly probably aren't 
the only kinds, but the ones we want to just kind of open up for reflection today. So we're going to talk about them a little bit. We have a video, and then we're going to do another breakout session. Um, so yeah, would you start slides now, please, Summer? Absolutely. Thank you. Oops. What's happening? Oh, they didn't get to see. They didn't get to see our cute breakout. There we go. Stretch There's break. our little stretch break, kitty cat. Kitty. Yep. Isn't that cute? Yep. All right. Thank you, so Summer. now we're back from the stretch break, and yeah. we're and Annie was talking about unconscious bias. So Annie. Yeah. So these these are the four kinds we're going to look at or think about: affinity, attribution, beauty, confirmation, and conformity. So uh, let's start with the first type, affinity. Summer? Yeah. So an affinity bias, right, as you see on here, refers to our tendency to gravitate toward people similar to ourselves, right? I mean, I'm sure we all um, can relate to that. If you've ever wondered why similar people tend to become friends, it's because of affinity bias. We like people who remind us of ourselves or someone right, that we know and like. Um, so we will gravitate towards them. Um, yeah. my, uh, uh, my, my BFF and I found each other in theater class in college, and we've been friends ever since. And, um, and so there's that affinity bias, right? We became friends um, because we had similar interests and similar loves for theater. The next kind is attribution bias. Attribution bias contrib contributes to how we assess others and their achievements. When we think of our achievements, we judge ourselves based on our merit and our personality. Anything we've been awarded, we've earned because of our hard work. Anytime we have failed and we have been adversely impacted by external factors. When we assess others, we often think the opposite. We believe their successes are due to luck and their failures are due to poor cap capabilities or personal errors. It's an interesting cultural training we've had that we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt and not others. And these are not absolutes, These, mm -hmm. but things to be aware of um as we move through our days well and i mean it's you know it, it's also based on our society right american yeah, culture is like oh you got to work hard pull yourself up from the bootstraps how many of you right. heard that phrase before right um and right. not understanding that poverty can be generational that it is from systems of oppression right and so those are the external factors that impact um, generations of people and so yeah. it's something something to think about right as we do this yeah. work well and and some are part of what you're raising is that we blame people for bad situations they're in we feel right. like we created our own poverty and certainly you know one of the things that i think we're working to change is illness and and accessibility issues that we are are blamed for those there's somehow Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. attributed to us as something we we chose or found our way into the, oh yeah the, the really the really damaging notion of it was meant to be um you know people speaking to people in wheelchairs about oh you're such a gift you're so strong and you're such a gift to the rest of us mm. um yeah yeah absolutely Annie. i could okay. talk a long time about this, but we will move on. So you don't all have to hear my stories <laughs> and, and witness my tears. Okay. So another unconscious bias is beauty bias, right? Again, the unconscious bias definition is stereotypes formed outside our conscious awareness, right? So, um, you know, individuals might admit to having a beauty bias, right? We might, we may admit it, we may not. It's common to notice though, other people's appearance and associate with it with their personality. So, I mean, you've heard 
you know, you basically have 60 seconds or something like that. You Like you have a minute to make a first impression, right? That always sort of plays in my mind, right? What are people, they're already have figured out what they, whether they like me, don't like me, whether, you know, um, looking at me and looking at my appearance, figuring out who I am, right? Um, like my name is Summer, right? So people will think of me as sunny, right? Like in sunshine and they put that, they do that, right? And I have a personality that's very like, you know, extroverted and very happy. And so I kind of, I, you know, I have that as well. So people will um, notice that. But many of us judge others based on their physical attractiveness as well, right? And this can manifest in many ways, such as seeing a coworker as unprofessional because of their choice of clothing, right? Ooh, that's a little too ethnic. Or, oh, your hair doesn't really, hmm, maybe you should straighten it, right? Like I used to get things like that, right? Um, and so that attributes a stereotype to someone because of their physical appearance. And there are other, other ways in which we could talk about beauty and the culture, like the society trying to reinforce that by, you know, if you identify as female, you're supposed to wear makeup and wear, use a handbag and all of these things, right? I, I always seem to shock people when I don't have a handbag. And I love handbags, but I just don't love them anymore because they, they hurt my shoulders and I don't like it. And so I don't do them anymore. Well, and one that I would add is a, is a, is a tremendous uh, prejudice against fat. And there's yes. all sorts of re research being done that, in fact, tells us that we don't have any clear idea about why some people carry more weight than others. And the culture talks about it, and God knows there are so many commercials about it that that want us to eat Oreos, uh, or here's a new diet, here's the new weight loss program. Um, and you know what we what we've all heard is is about how that weight comes back. And so there's a number of really great books out now on um, health. One of one of my favorites is Health at Every Size. That um, uh, so it's just an emerging area of mm -hmm. of uh, I think really important uh, clarification. Uh, mm. clarification so absolutely mm -hmm. Annie and I think about my my own culture in which you're expected to eat a lot but then you're mm. not supposed to gain weight right right so right. so you think of the the Arab mother of which I am one you know saying cool cool eat 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 right and trying to give you lots of food when I was in Morocco yeah. they just kept piling the piling the food on my plate I'm like no I can't eat anymore right but you're not expected to keep the weight on right like you're yeah. that's not right. supposed to give you weight yeah right 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 so that I heard can a story happen yesterday about this and this mm -hmm. it's, uh, apparently there's a change in the culture going on right now around um weight and apparently um a lot of celebrities have been showing up smaller with a lot of weight loss and it turns out yeah. um, they've been using ozimbic the drug mm. that has been advertised for diabetes right. too. oh wow and um it has caused kind of a shaking of the earth around this notion of, of thinness again mm -hmm. yeah. that um, has come down because there's a, people like um, the Kardashians, for example, mm -hmm. are losing okay. a lot of, showing up suddenly thin. Mm -hmm. And um, right. the, the people were talking about how it has impacted, um, especially women, mm -hmm. around yeah. the notions of what is a good size. Right. Yeah. yeah. Pressure. Right. And well, bias against people who are fat versus thin. That's right. Well, thank you, Dr. K, Dr. XK. And, you know, one of my current mentors is a pop star named Lizzo. Who, I know Lizzo. Uh, and Your mentor. Just, wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, she, I, I watched a show of, about her choosing her new dance uh, the the next group of dancers that would go on tour with her was called big she calls them her big girls mm -hmm. and she just has a tremendous attitude change about embracing herself embracing her size and her curves and uh it's really you know as a 70 year old woman you know i'm used to wearing the kind of clothes that hide everything 
right? As though that makes me look thin or something. But um, yeah, I'm taking inspiration. I'm taking inspiration from Lizzo. So let's move along. Keep going. Okay. Um, so the next one is confirmation bias. Different types of unconscious bias examples include confirmation. This is the idea that people search for bits of evidence that back up their opinions instead of objectively looking at all of the information. Often this causes people to overlook information, focus on factors that fit only their view, or reject evidence that contradicts what they already believe. If you believe fat people are lazy or don't take care of themselves or in bad health, uh, then you will see that evidence. You will see that proved over and over. So it's a, just another example of needing to uh, work on self-awareness, noticing when that sense of just confirming what you already believed about a person and it's again that notion of choosing curiosity, choosing curiosity about ourselves. Why am I? Why am I assuming this person is lazy or uh, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. The next one is conformity bias. It's our last bias of the five. Conformity bias is related to peer pressure. It occurs when you allow your views to be swayed by those around you because you're seeking acceptance from a group. And I'm sure we all we all grew up and we all I mean, I don't know if you all experienced the school system here in the States, but, you know, the, there's a thing called teenager time, you know, in Arabic culture is not really the teenager time, but we got this teenager time and everybody's trying to like fit in and be accepted. Right. And it's all about that. Right. But when this can be a problem is when we have what we call group thinking, right? And so you might see that in jurors, right? Think of jurors and what they're supposed to do. Or they're, they're supposed to like get each other to um, come up with a verdict, right? Well, we know that there's lots of problems with that, right? Um, and so, you know, you want to be accepted and so you might think somebody is not guilty and then you change it to guilty, right? Um, or you can hang the jury, you know, um, and say, no, I'm not going to give in to this peer pressure, right? It can also be a problem when there are things like mob mentality, which is a psychological phenomena where people get hysterical and they can create a mob. And we saw that historically um, uh, happening throughout the history of America, starting with the Puritans and, and the witch burning, right? You know, uh, burning women and, and men as well and, uh, and all genders, right? Um, that they deemed were um, possible witches, right? And were a threat to society. So that is one way. And so we, I need to stop sharing, Annie, I believe, because we have a video to show. Um, okay, come on. This is a video that's called Unintentional Still Hurts, Overcoming Unconscious Bias. And hang on one moment. It's wanting to start and I need it to not start. Thank you. And I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, make sure it's turned up so you can hear it. We all do it with just about everyone we meet. We label people according to stereotypes. And often don't even know we're doing it. We make snap judgments every day, at home, at work. All based on how someone looks or speaks or what little information we know of them. I have all the information. Sure. I have a good rest of your day. Bye. Hi, Michaela. Good morning, Janine. Say, I want to talk to you about your new hairstyle. It's really not appropriate for work. Your natural look is, well, Unprofessional. Unprofessional? So, you're telling me that I can't wear my naturally curly hair curly? Well. I loved your presentation. 
Well, thank you very much. Very informative. And you speak so well. <laughs> You're so articulate. Well, my girlfriend thinks we can clean out our garage in one weekend. I told her in her dreams. So that's the plan. Wait, you are a lesbian. I mean, you don't look like a lesbian. Great place. You're gonna love it here, Beth. I'm excited to be part of the team. So, where are you from, Trisha? Oh, I have a nice short commute. I'm from Garden Park. I meant, where are you from originally? Bias can be harmful when it's fueled by stereotypes or when we use it to validate our thinking. When you find yourself making an assumption or judgment about someone, use STEP, which stands for stop, think, explore, and prepare. Let's, Let's break it down. down. All right. Now we'd like to send you into our last breakout before um, before we take a lunch break. And uh, we will come back and have an opportunity to share a few things. So uh, again, we'll give you 15 minutes. And, uh, um, it, you know, in encourage you to share the time, share the space. And uh, Ram, are we about ready? Uh, yes, we are. I need to Great. place the questions, Annie, in the in the chat. Well, let's let's do it. Let's do it by broadcast. Okay, okay. I'll do it by broadcast too. When when after they're gone. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Uh, Nico, would you like to join Arun? Um, sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are some rooms with only two, that's why I asked. Um, I will also join Arun. Um, let me find one with uh, um, only two. Okay, here I go. Sally, do you need help? Sally, are you there by any chance? Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to get those questions into the broadcast message again. Uh, who, who hasn't spoken in the large group yet? Who'd be willing to share Madeline? Well, I just want to talk a little bit about um, a friend who shared the, the impact. And I've heard this also from my, my kids' friends. Um, you know, someone, someone who, um, from both someone who was an immigrant and uh, Asian American kids who were born here. And so when someone says, where are you from? And they say, you know, California. They say, no, where are you really from? And I was kind of interested because I was, I don't know, helping out one of my kids' classes. And it seemed like most of the class was uh, born in like uh, Cupertino or, but they go places and people say, where are you from? And if they say California, they keep saying, no, where are you really from? And to me, that's so aggressive because it means they can't conceive of people who look Asian being from the United States. And that's yeah. what's hurtful about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. Who else will share? Patricia, are you waving at us that you'll share? Oh. <laughs> who else? Who else will share? Connie? Oh, 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, with just the examples that were given, and those were pretty cringeworthy examples and stuff, but, you know, some of them may be occurring um, at the church, but I think there's more subtle examples and just feeling like, well, number one, it's good to have the awareness um, with this workshop, but maybe getting into a little more of the gritty, nitty gritty situation as well. Do you, have, have, did something occur to you? Did an example occur to you that's a little more subtle? Um, no, I'd, I'd have to think about that over the lunch yeah. break, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Connie. Who else? Who else? Yeah, Asta. Yeah. Um, I, I was in the group with Connie and I'm trying to think of something more subtle. I'm a teacher and I'm a retired, so I substitute now. And I'm in Milpitas and just about everybody has a, a name from their heritage. And I think, I, and I really, really strive to pronounce names correctly, but I think mispronouncing kids' names is, a, is an everyday, subtle, yeah microaggression and yeah. um, we need to do better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Asta. That is that is a really important one. And it takes effort. And that's, you know, that's that's good. That Nika. Just kind of going back on um what Asta just said, the name thing. So my full name is Shanika. That was an issue for me in school, which mm. is why I ended up going by Nikki even work. I ended up changing, just going by Nika because it seemed like people didn't want to take the time or effort to pronounce it right or ask me the proper way or yeah. come out as something else. And they would just kind of run with it. And for me, I sh I should have just kept, you know, and corrected people. But instead, it seemed like it was the easier route for me to just go by Nika. And that's, there's no mistake there. But I shouldn't have to feel like that. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. I should, you know, but it just seemed like it was more, I was making more of a stir or I was, you know, if I have to keep explaining my name or saying it like that. Um, yeah. But I've been mispronounced all through, you know, elementary school. And now I think my name is a little more, you've heard it maybe once or twice. So it's a little, they, people pronounce it better. But um, definitely the name thing, you can feel a way if a teacher, you know, constantly mispronounces your name or asks you, hey, do you have a nickname I can call you by? No, right. this is my name, you know. So. Right. It's a, it, thank you, Nika. And I, I just want to say I'm sorry. And I, I think that that pointing out the notion of centering the person who's mistake, making the mistake of the name, saying, my, my convenience is more important than respecting how, what your name is and what you want to be called. Um, thank you. I think that's, I think those are really important. Anything else? Anyone else have a, have something you'd be willing to share? Be brave. Be brave, people. Yeah, like my my name, Roskowski. How, how many get two Pollocks to change that light bulb? I mean, I've had things against me all my life, but I. Bear with it. And I go on. Yeah. It's, it's, I got to live with it. Yeah. 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 there about me. I'm surprised my wife didn't marry me because her, her name was Berg, B E R G. She yeah. went to Berskowski. Yeah. Yeah. And my grandmother <laughs> had the bias of me marrying a Pollock because what that would mean to her. Right. 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 Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, thank you both for sharing. And I think that um, it's painful. And, I, and, and I'm sorry that you both have been through that. And, and I think there's some privilege in being able to kind of uh, just kind of live with it, you know. Um, but it does matter. 
it does matter. And there is that Im embedded bias, like you were saying, Carol, that, um, yeah. You just have to suck it up <laughs> and go on. Well, and I, and I, yeah. And I think that we're in a time now where we're correcting some of that, that when we're learning to, to, to practice and center um, the people who are impacted rather than centering the people who just want to make it easy on themselves. And that's our training, you know. Um, and so I, it, it's a good thing. And I think it's time to stop making people suck it up. And um, it's time to, to, to practice being more respectful and asking people, how do you pronounce it? What do you prefer? That kind of thing. So you've definitely earned a lunch break. <laughs> and, we have uh, we have a video first, Annie. Three oh, yeah, minute yeah, video. Yeah. I'm yeah. So sorry. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Go for it. So we have we have a, a brief video video that we hope will kind of close it with a little uh, uh, lo a little fun, a little joy, and maybe some tears, but hopefully some joy too. Each day we have a chance to connect with other people. And when we do, we assign an identity to each person we meet. We put people in groups that help us define the world around us or the world we think is around us. Some groups are helpful to us. Others we think deserve respect. Some we deem average. Some are to be avoided. Some are wise, inexperienced. There are those we idolize and those we ignore. Groups that separate us from them. Today I'm going to ask you some general questions. They may seem funny, random, serious, or deeply personal. Please be brave, answer honestly. Who in this room is the life of the party? Who is adopted? What happens when we make connections and groups begin to dissolve? There are those who believe in life after death. Those who are immigrants, the lonely, those who love fast food, yeah, yeah. those who love science fiction movies, those who have been bullied, and we who have bullied others. The lucky ones who are madly in love. Those who have lost a child. Those who have overcome addiction. Those who acknowledge the courage of others. Those who have found peace. And others who have saved lives. And then there's everyone who experiences this together. Maybe there's more that connects us than we think. Because in the end, there is only us. I got tears in my eyes. Mm. Yeah. This is Bev. I have a question. 
what were they showing in that video? You mean, what was the intention? What were the pictures? Can you just explain? I, I, I heard the words, but I, I can tell by the words that there were some very affecting pictures going on. What were they showing? Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Bev, for that reminder. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry that we forgot. Um, there was a group of, pic of, of people, a very diverse group of people, ages, colors, um, abilities. And each time they would say a, 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 a commonality, people would move uh, to the center of kind of a U and identified that they identified with that, um, that particular uh, commonality. And then they would move back to the group and they'd say another one and then they'd, um, then they would come forward. And, um, you know, when the two people came forward uh, about sobriety, um, everybody applauded. And so then there was a group of people who acknowledge and encourage people. And then at the very end, they all moved together as one group. And we saw lots of smiles and joy and just a, a pretty tremendous sense of we're in this together and moving among themselves. And uh, yeah, it was really touching. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. I, I'm, I just, again, I'm sorry that we forgot and didn't do that. And um and I really appreciate your bravery in, in asking for what you need. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I think right there is a bias on our part that we assume that everybody here can see and they can hear well yeah. what is going on. Yes. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Carol. I, I think Another aspect of the videos with all the different groupings is that you saw people being in one group going back and sometimes mm. being in another. You saw the, the mixing that these groups cut across all the previous divisions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. And, yeah. and when they asked who here has lost a child, the man and woman that came forward ended up holding each other's hands. Yes. Yes. Ah. Thank you. So now it's time for lunch. Yep. So we'll come back at 12 divided. We are connected. Even when we dance alone in a room, we are connected. In the heat of the sun, we are connected. In the glow of the stars, we are connected. Across the limits of our imagination, we are connected. Even when nature trembles, we are connected. So it's good to be with you all and honoring our connections, building connections, deepening connections. So thank you all for being here. <clears throat> so we have two more uh, topics that we want to that we want to cover before before our time is up in an hour. And the first one is uh, some reflection on power dynamics. Um, power dynamics refer to the different ways people can behave to influence each other. Demand withdrawal, distance or pursuer, fear, shame are three common power dynamics. Changing the power dynamics in relationships requires trust, vulnerability, honest, and respectful communication. So just a reminder that part of what we're holding as an undercurrent today or an overriding um, wondering invitation is how do these topics impact uh, your congregation, which is mostly white, having a, a, a BIPOC minister, Black, Indigenous, person of color, 
as your minister. And, you know, you're fortunate enough to, to have your president be a, a, a person of color as well. So just a reminder to kind of hold that, um, hold that as we talk a little more. <coughs> Summer. <coughs> Summer, can I get you to talk for a minute? Sorry. Would you like me to um, continue with our? Okay. All right. Sorry, y'all. Back again. Here we go. So the amazing Reverend Cheryl M. Walker, whom I love so much, says authority is the ability to say yes and power is the ability to say no. I have a cat visiting me now. This is Leo, in case you see Leo popping up in the screen. Authority is the ability to say yes, and power is the ability to say no. Both are needed for leaders to lead. They need both authority and power. Now, we don't have to define these terms strictly, but if we simply questioned all authority, we end up giving our leaders the responsibility, but none of the authority. Trust is critical for the work of elected leaders as well as called or hired ministers. Without trust, leaders will experience feeling disempowered. We must find a balance between authority and power. And you see here, we have the balance of power. Are you, Annie, are you ready to come back or no? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, this is a, a, a silly, but uh, I think a effective way to talk about when power and authority pull against each other, when they're not um, united, pedaling in different directions. <clears throat> Uh, when we talk about shared ministry, uh, we, we want to have balances of power in our minister, in our religious professionals, for example. Um, you know, so we wonder what might be a, a better alternative to this crazy bike right here. <clears throat> Perhaps a tandem bike? Um, two bikes going in the same direction? The common struggles around authority in Unitarian Universalism, Universalism, excuse me, the common struggles around authority in Unitarian Universalism intersect with the systems of power and privilege in our congregation and in our society. You know, we come by questioning authority honestly. We are a faith that grew out of <clears throat> heretical theological issues. We are proud of our heretics, and we we struggle sometimes with calling ministers, hiring ministers, hiring staff, wanting them, giving them the authority to make decisions, and then questioning and, and fighting against it. Um, we can do the same with boards. We elect boards in our congregations, in our association, and, you know, representative democracy is about electing people, asking them to make decisions for us. And then in congregations, excuse me, people can undermine their authority. And lack of trust can be a way to interfere with leadership and um, undermine the, the, the dynamic functioning of a, of a good congregation. <clears throat> this means that our struggles around authority and ministry fall most heavily on those furthest from the center of power and privilege in our national and Unitarian uni Universalist cultures. Those people who come in on the margins, who aren't older white male, um, people of color, 
people with disabilities, trans people. And so this whole notion of centering those people, practicing centering those people, developing the muscles it takes to do that. Um, so different kinds of power. Just wanted to look for just a second about formal power or authority is given by the organization. Now, we could get into a, a, a pretty serious uh, conversation or debate about what's power and what's authority. So we just bring these um, to sort of help smooth that. Uh, formal power or authority is given by the organization. Hiring and calling a minister, hiring a hiring an office manager, electing a board. And then informal power is leadership without position and may shift from one person to another. One of the ways informal power can work in a congregation is when the formal power is undermined. When people gossip, tell bad stories, tell negative stories about people in leadership, have a bone to pick with somebody, but talk to somebody else about it rather than speaking directly. <clears throat> so what if we imagined viewing these things differently and affirming that ministry is a partnership? We all do it. We're all responsible for it. And the minister in particular, we, we turn to as our guide, as our leader, and we share it. We embrace power with instead of power over. We continue working on transforming ourselves and the world together, as we hope we're doing today. We become a mission-centered congregation that shares ministry and power. What if this were a place where authority is also shared? And everyone helps to direct the ministry of the congregation together. <clears throat> so we'd like to do another breakout and <clears throat> raise invite you to, to, to address these questions together. How do we share the ministry and provide both authority and power to those who lead us? The power to make decisions and the power to influence us. And how do we do that with one another? What systems are in place that might keep us from being able to do this? And what might we need to change or think about changing at First Unitarian San Jose? So, Ram, oh, Ram. Yes, yes, I'm. <clears throat> We're going to do another breakout session. Okay. And same kind of format, three to four, 15 minutes, three minutes each. So as Ram gets that ready for us, do a show of hands. How do you think you're doing in your conversations about sharing the time and the space? Good? Good? Okay or eh, needs improvement. Could use some improvement, okay? Several thumbs up. Great. So <clears throat> an invitation again to share the space if you're an, an external processor and to be brave and speak up if you're um, a quieter person who just needs more time to think that you both be brave to challenge yourselves. Um Please give me a minute that there, there are somehow fewer people, so I'm going to recreate the rooms. Uh, great, great. Thank you, Dom. Yeah, a few people had to go. Carol and Bob have raised a hand. Yeah, great. Please unmute yourself. I appreciate the people that I met with, but on the last two breakouts, it was with the same people. And Thank I would, you know, <clears throat> meeting yes. with different people. Thank you. Without hurting you. anybody's feelings that I've already met right. with twice. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Carol. Um, and that was brave. 
that was brave. And I thank you for that. Um, and to anyone who feels like um, they would like uh, maybe a different assignment, just simply move out of your room and um, I will move you into another room. Um, um, I perfectly understand. I don't understand Zoom's algorithm for assigning rooms. Um, I, I think this, this assignment looks, looks different to me than before. Uh, but well, I think, <clears throat> Ram, I think we need to, to um, start, start the breakout again. Um, you know, get rid of this one and start again because we need less breakout rooms. Okay. With less people. And so, okay, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 22 would be the number to plug in. Okay. So I created uh, six breakout rooms. Um, most have three, some have four. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll so probably have to move some. So give us a, a moment as we, when we do that, we'll probably, I'm assuming, have to move. And if, and as Ram said, if you are like, oh, I was with all these people before, come back and tell us. Okay. Or, or also just... remember, some people have two people in each screen. Yeah, that's right. true. Thanks, Madeline. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's not perfect and we don't need to be perfect, but we'll try our best. Yeah, thank here, you. Here, here goes. Thank you, Ron. We were scheduled, we were, we had planned that we were going to do a share back, but in terms of time, uh, encourage you to kind of hold, hold any thoughts that you have that you might share and we'll open it up for you know, after the next section to sharing about it, both of these things. So go ahead. All right. Thank you. So we are going to do a little um, interim ministry revisited. Um, you'll learn a little something new, and um, some of the slides will be um, something you've seen possibly before. So what is the purpose of interim ministry? Um, this comes from a primer for congregational staff. And as you see, it says the interim period following the end of one relationship, right? One relationship with one minister and preceding the beginning of another, right? So it's that interim period. Um, so one minister, and then you have an interim minister, and then you'll have another um, hopefully called minister. Um, it, is, it provides the breathing space during which a congregation can review its goals, assess its programs, consider the quality of its life in common, and tune up, get a tune up like we do for cars, right? Get a tune up for a new era. The one to two year period it usually takes for a congregation um, to grow into and own its new identity, right? So creating a new identity independent of both positive and negative feelings about the ministry that has come to an end can be exciting, even transformative when devoted to self-examination and institutional renewal, a palate cleanser, one might say. Mm, like that sorbet they give you before we had that at Lolita's in Boston. That was lovely, a little, little sorbet before we ate. So as um, we said before, tasks of interim ministry would be to claim and honor your past and heal your grief, right, and conflicts, illuminate your unique identity, strengths, needs, and challenges, Clarify the multiple dimensions of your leadership, ordained and lay and navigate the shifts in leadership that accompany times of transition. And then um, another task, some other tasks would be renew connections with the available resources within and beyond the UUA, which you are doing today, yay you, and renew your vision, strengthen your stewardship, Prepare for new professional leadership and engage your future with anticipation and zest. 
So how is interim ministry different from settled ministry? Because there's no single right recipe for interim ministry. There's no single recipe. And of course, each minister brings their unique strengths and style. But generally, in addition <laughs> to carrying out customary ministerial duties, interim ministers help congregation explore five areas called focus points. Heritage, reviewing how the congregation has been shaped and formed. Mission, defining and redefining sense of purpose and direction. Leadership, reviewing member needs and the congregation's ways of organizing and developing leadership. Connections, discovering and nurturing the relationships a faith community builds outside of itself and future preparing for the next era of leadership. These are really important. And so, as you can see, interim ministry is systems work, right? You're looking at the system, right? The interim minister is likely to be quite deliberate about how they join the system, right? Each congregation is a system. It's an institution unto itself, right? and how they leave it as they prepare to conclude their service to the congregation. And since it's about the whole system, right, it is a team effort. Congregational openness and readiness for interim work, <coughs> excuse me, greatly impacts how the interim minister and staff work together during this time. Because interim ministers are intentionally temporary, right, they are well positioned to shine light on difficult truths and to affect changes that help move a congregation toward greater health, readying them for a new ministry. So we want to do a little jam board with you. I need to stop sharing because I have to show you a jam board. Yay! But we have these questions and they are gonna be on each page of the jam board. Um, how many of you are familiar with Jamboard? Oh, I see all of you. All of you are familiar. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. John Burke raised uh, a hand, so I assume John is familiar. Good, all right, excellent. Well, I will need those of you that are familiar to maybe help sometimes, but let us, um, let me, Share my screen to show you a jam board. Um, but first is what I need to do. La, 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 la. Okay, I need to but make sure. I can, I'll just, talk, I'll just yeah. talk for a minute, Summer. Mm -hmm. that a jam board, you know how traditionally we get in the sanctuary or the social hall when we're doing one of these workshops and we put up the big sheets of paper and y'all get sticky notes and go put them up on various things. Well, that's what Jamboard is doing that for Zoom. So uh, uh, Summer has created these various sheets of paper, these whiteboard kind of things. And when she puts it up, she's gonna show you how you choose, uh, you can even choose your color of Post-it. And you pull a Post-it and you put it down and then you fill it in with your answer to the question. And then you can put it anywhere you want on the paper. And as you can see, I've put the link. Thank you, Annie. Put the link yeah. in for all of you to be able to participate and edit. And we're getting some, there's a fox in here and some others. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you how it works. So the post-it notes are right here. Sticky note. Hey, so, Summer, yes. Let me, just, let me just bust in and say, if everybody goes to the chat box, you'll. did you already say this? Summer, I didn't hear it. I did. did you, I said I put, posted the link to it in the chat great. box. Yeah. So if you click on it, then you will show up as some animal oh, or another. Look at somebody just did a testing. So let's say I point here and I go sticky note. Oh, look, sticky note comes up and I say, hi. I can change this to any color I want, green, blue, pink, orange, or yellow. And then I hit save. Now, it has now gone over there. I need to cancel and then go, oh, look, here's high. And you can click on it and move it, right? So um, 
that is one thing you can do. You can do a you can do a circle, you can do a text box. So let's say we have text box and then you can write something in it. There you go, right? And then you can go like that, get rid of it. Um, you can draw with a pen. Ooh. And then the eraser is right here and you can then erase, which can be cumbersome, but fun. Um, you can add a an image if you want. So right here under the sticky notes, there's add an image to talk about what you want. So you go there and you I would go to Google Images, right? Because I don't have any photos. And let's say I want to look for a bear, okay? Then I go like this, I click on it, I insert and voila, magically there's a bear here. Rawr. Bears can be a little scary, especially when you're camping and they look at you through the tent. You're peeking out your tent and there's a bear with these golden eyes staring back at you. That can be scary. Yeah, I think I've been through that. All right, when reflecting, so we have some questions here. So I'm just gonna show you very quickly. We have this first page is when reflecting on the tasks of interim ministry, what are you doing to engage with those tasks? So you can do sticky notes, you can do image, whatever you want to do, or you can write or do a text box. Then up here is where you go to the next page. And you can do this. You don't have to do them in order. You can do whatever you want. Which of the five areas, heritage, mission, leadership, connections, future, excite you the most and why? And then our third page says, which areas still need to be engaged within the congregation? That's the five areas. How can you help your interim minister to aid the congregation in engaging those areas more? All right, and I see that there is a raised hand. Um, Jenny, do you want to yes. unmute? Yes. Um, Thank you. So uh, the areas that still need to be engaged within the congregation, could you put that list in the chat so that I can I will, yes, keep absolutely. my eye on them? We will do that. We will do that. So, um, Annie, would you be able to do that? Because I'm sharing this and I don't, I can't access that at the same time. And again, those were heritage, mission, leadership, connections, and future. And maybe if you could um, make sure they have the little definitions next to them as well, Annie. So, if you are having a difficult time accessing this document or doing what you need to do, you can send a message or you can send the message to the whole group or just to one of us and we can place that for you. All right. So this is your time to have some fun. And then once you have co-created this, we will go over them and look at them. All right. Okay, so the five different areas are now in the chat box. Thank you, Annie. Yeah. I guess we will have some silent time to do this because I can't share my screen and share music at the same time. wonder if I can share some music. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think I'd have to stop sharing. So I'm going to say if you are having problems, if you could send what you'd like um, to Annie um, to do the little sticky note for you. Yeah, if you just put it in the box, if you just put it in the chat box, I will. Can you hear my music? Mm. Marnie says it's all too small for me to see. Oh, yeah, I know. You know what you can do, Marnie? Look at this. I'm going to show you. If you look at me right now, I click on this blue one, and then I go, Rrr. you see how big that is now? Right? So you can 
if you can, you can click on them and move them like this so you can see them. But you have to do it not on your on the screen that you're doing, Summer. Every Why? everyone else has to go to their own. Yeah, their but own. see somebody's dragging it, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody yeah. has the power. You all have the power to do this. Yep. But just on their own Jamboard, not on the one on the screen. That's what I meant. Everybody's on this Jamboard right now. I know. Yeah. But they have, yeah. Yeah. I think she was saying you can move it from your own side, not on the one you see sharing. You can only move it from your personal Jamboard. You can't touch this screen share and try to move it, which I did once. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Thank you, I didn't understand. Yeah. Thank you. I did not understand. I'm like, no, no, but intentions and impact. There we go. I know. I was not getting that. Thank you for for explaining it to me because I was not getting it. It was trial and error for me. <laughs> I actually yeah, tried it. I was you. like, oh wait. I know. You're like, how come I can't move this thing? Yeah. yeah. Is there a way to make the Jamboard screen bigger in the app because we can't get any more on here and make the each um no there is no way to do that as far you as can't i know make all those big but, and have them well readable. right so yeah so you see some people are moving things and getting it all like looking yeah yeah but and you, then, run, you run out of space if you put make all of those sticky notes big like the green one you yeah. won't have room for all of them so then we're gonna have to go like this and make them a little smaller so we can get everybody in here okay. and then as okay. we look at them we can individually you know, make them bigger. So there's no yeah. way. How's that sound? Bigger. Yeah. And you all will have this Jamboard after the after this program. Oh. So you'll be able to go back later and look at all these notes. Mm -hmm. How does yeah. this work for Bev? Oh, right. Eight. Hey, hey Bev, if you want to tell me, I will make you, I will um, make It does not work for me, but please don't let it bother you. Go ahead. I'm listening actively. All right. Well, if you would like to do it, Bev, you could tell me. Uh, no, uh, I am not okay. technical enough to figure this out. No, no, no. So. I just mean if if you wanted to tell me, you know, an answer you, you would like put in the Jamboard, I would do that for you. Oh, okay. Well, if I come up with an answer, I will unmute and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bev. And thanks, whoever it was that uh, Marnie, was that you that pointed out that Bev couldn't participate really? Oh. Anyway, whoever it was, thank you. Jenny. That was Jenny. Great. Thank you, Jenny. I do not hear any music. I hear something else. I know. I'm playing my music, but. We can't hear it because I'm sharing. So if I stop sharing, then we don't see this and, and I'd say fine. don't worry about music because I think we're all concentrating so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Colleen's like, just forget yeah. about the music. Yeah. Forget yeah. about it. This is enough to worry about. <laughs> this is enough to I don't need music to distract me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Overload. So but remember, look at this is something new you're learning. Like how fun is this, right? Oh yeah, it's a fun little game. Mm-hmm. So just a reminder, there's there's three screens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I go like this, what? Look at some people are putting stuff already on the, on the next screen. Oh, look at. Look at. I that. don't know why we have five, but we should only have three. But anyway, there's only three that we are working with. Oh. That? Yeah. Okay, so we can start making these bigger. So mm -hmm. Bill, you can you can move to the next screen if you want. If you guys also, if you change your view at the top, you can close the meeting chat and make the view just standard. The whole screen will just be the shared screen. You won't see anyone. I don't know if you have your side-by-side -side setting, but it'll be a lot bigger to see that way if you do that. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's really helpful. Yeah. So, Bev, let me, let me read a few of the answers while you're... Um, so, in the first page, when reflecting on the tasks of interim ministry... What are you doing to engage with those tasks? And I'm just going to read you a few. Stepping out of the way because I recognize I'm part of the old way. <laughs> Attending this meeting and others. Asked questions and brought concerns to Ram. 
connection. I think the congregation needs to hear more about what interim ministry is doing, planning and learning. Attending staff meetings, suggesting updates in processes. Doing workshops like this one. And the next page is, um, just, oh, what, what? There the, you go, there you go. No, it started writing. Oh, oh. I changed it for you, it's on the Thank screen. You. Which of the five areas excite you the most and why? Heritage, mission, leadership, connections, and future. And some of the answers are the future as we look for our settled minister. What new ideas and avenues, avenues of growth will, will we explore? Leadership style is an important part of choosing a settled minister. <clears throat> so we need, to, we need to see if we need to make any changes. Um, I think external connections are probably something that the settled minister would do because they will hopefully be here for many years. And let me go to the, let me go to the third screen. Whoops. There you go. Um, which areas still need to be engaged within the congregation? How can you help your interim minister to aid the congregation in engaging those areas? And so some of the post-its, leadership need to develop more leaders. Um, somebody writes on, ditto about honest dialogue about what, we re what really happened with Joe Mosier. Mm -hmm. Leadership style wanted by the congregation. Uh-oh, we have one that's, one that's gone rogue. It's gone, <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't want be, it doesn't want to be touched. It's handsome. <laughs> Attract, attract new families, strong RE program, keep attending and participating, be honest and trust and grow. Wow, I could actually read that at that size. I just want to say that <laughs> with these when glasses on. Screen, yeah. <laughs> Facing what happened about Joe Mosher's departure, people need to know if there are plans to do anything. Organization and de delegation of groups, who covers what, hospitality, special events, security. Leadership and communication, because if the membership starts to feel a disconnect with the board of trustees, I think that is, Correct. minister, we will lose members. Leadership, oh, you read that? Did I read discussion about our mission and vision? Bring in more young people or our wonderful church will eventually die out. Hmm. I am available, but feel like I'm not sure how to participate since I am not currently active in OMC or BOD. So OMC is Organizational Management Council, I think, but is BOD like the board? Yes, yes. board of directors. Directors, got it, thank you. thank you. Oh, so if you're not involved in those, how, how do you- How do you participate? Participate, be engaged in this work, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good to know. Mm, I love these. Mm -hmm. here's, an, here's an answer back on the five areas. Connections. More transparency about everything we are doing. Want to understand what our inter, inter, interim minister's style is. Seems more laid back and with less emphasis on communication and organization. Are you back on number two? Oh, page yeah. two. Yeah, Got I went it. back to number two. Yeah, part, part of uh, having such a long-term ministry as you did, it can be kind of a shock when the next minister comes in and their style is so, so different. And really, I think that, that as this person pointed out, Kalani having such a different style as, as Reverend Nancy, um, that, that's, I think that's a gift because... You don't know what the next your settled minister is going to have. Mm. So, Dr. XK being a little more low key, not having the the kind of intensity about organization that Reverend Nancy did, is 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 uncomfortable perhaps for many of you, but but also a gift I think. Oh, I just love that you just keep adding things. This is great. Yeah, because you don't know what you're gonna get. Yep. Mm hmm. Gotta try something else. So I'm going to stop 
sharing unless you wanted to read some more. No, I think that's good. I just okay. wanted to give Bev a sense of, of mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what was being shared. Mm -hmm. But I think if we want to get people out of here on time. Oh, I see. Thank you um, for I just want again. to say I want to say thank you. Thank you very much for for reading those to me. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Bev. And uh, you know, all the other comments just thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it used I, to be that when we had paper and sticky notes got put up there, uh, people read them before they went up. So um, right. you're sort of doing the same thing for me. So thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome, Bev. And I and and you know we're always learning we're always learning and i'm just so grateful for your outspokenness about your need and i remembered it early and then forgot so i'm just so grateful and would encourage others to speak up uh to speak up on bev's behalf so as we are getting ready to close summer and i always like to as part of our ending process be to invite you all to share um, aha moments that are sticking with you or hmm moments, things you're leaving thinking about, want to spend some more time on. So would invite you to unmute and um, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> would invite you to unmute and share either an aha moment that is kind of sparkly and shiny uh, or, you know, exciting in you or, or uh, hmm, that you're thinking about. Well, I'll, I'll speak up. My aha moment was uh, being delighted to see all the faces of everyone who's here, but also being a bit concerned that um, these are all very familiar faces. Uh, and I don't see really any new members or anyone whom I'm not familiar with, which I was kind of hoping would be the case. Um, but I don't know if other people feel the same way. Well, yeah, I see some thumbs up, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate appreciate the observation and and sharing that. Definitely a hmm. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. Other people. And I'm noticing that not all of the people that are on the search committee for our new minister um, joined today. Mm. A few, a few did. Yeah. Yeah. So also, thank you, thank you, thank you, Carol. Yeah, Marnie. Board members, I there are a number of board members who are not present, present, and and OMC. Thank you, Marnie. Another concern. Mm -hmm. Yes, Colleen. I'll point out that the session is being recording recorded, which I'm very grateful for. Um, because I can review it and see and think about more of these things, but it can also be shared with our board and our OMC and the search committee, um, because I think there's some really important things that um, we've heard many of these in different formats, right. but it's the aha for me is like, oh, I forgot about that. Mm. Or, oh, that's important. Right. Or keep mm -hmm. thinking about that so we can watch it again. Yeah. So Colleen, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. And I would invite you to share, what was one thing that you said, oh, I'd forgotten about that? Um, the stop, the, the step mm -hmm. thing about when you're in over your head, you don't know the person, you don't know the situation, and you're you're impelled to say something, is right. just, just stop a minute. Step right. back, think of the other person before you say it. You know, give things time, and that's nice. a real important one for me. Thank you, Colleen. I love that one. Yeah, Madeline. Well, this is uh, this workshop is happening like right before our election meeting, and so yeah, in hindsight, it would have been good to invite all the candidates. 
who are at this point candidates. Um, but there's a number of new faces. And um, I really do hope, yes, that we can um, ask that everyone either look at it again or review or see it for the first time and have discussion in our various groups. And I do want to say one of the things that really struck me is that little short video on microaggressions was one of the best mm. short videos that I've ever seen. And the analogy, the mosquito bite analogy is, I think, so perfect. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've seen longer ones and I thought this was more effective than any. And I think also because it's animation, it tends to uh, it tends to start out by being disarming. Mm. So. Mm. Could could you put the link to that uh, video in the chat? Uh, I wasn't able to join you in the morning so that I could take a look yeah. at it. Yeah, and and we'll also share the slides so you'll have all the uh, links to various oh, things okay. that we've shared. Um, let's see what else. Other other. Connie things? has a hand raised. Wait, Connie. Yeah, it was just fun doing the um, sticky note or the jamboree yeah. one, and people had a lot of good suggestions. And I, I hope that's not lost that we somehow in in a meeting or somehow have a follow up about that. It's not a perfectly formed thing, but it, it reminds right. us of the energy, the synergy that we can put together. And I, I just keep feeling like somehow in the pandemic, we've lost touch with that creativeness of ourselves and yeah um, it was good to be reminded of that again yeah yeah thank you connie i i love that and think that uh figuring out a way to share it with the rest of the congregation is a really would be great would be just great other thoughts other ahas yes frey i appreciated uh the reminder of the uh the biases the unconscious bias mm. And it, it, it's, it, you always need to be reminded just to be aware of the situation and, and what you're, what you're saying. Right, right. Thank you, Frey. Yeah, Mary and then Jan. I really like the ice, the iceberg hmm. picture, the graphic. I mean, it really made an impression. What you yeah. see is not always what you get. Yes, yes. And also the mosquito one. That is something I'll carry with me. Great, great. Thank you, Mary. Jan? Thank you. It was just a little bit of a hmm when uh, we were redoing the breakout rooms and um, you sort of took over from Ram, I felt a little bit, but I know Ram is very, very competent with the uh, with, uh, technological things, at least from my experience from him so that just felt a little uh I don't know a little overpowering for me so Jan I'm really grateful of what I let me just make sure I understand that it felt to you like we asked Ron to do it he was doing it and then we sort of took over and didn't right. just let him thank right. you Jan I, I I really appreciate that and I apologize Ron for for no worries yeah I I just think I think Speaking up is one of the things we're talking about. So thank you, Jan. I appreciate it. And I apologize for, you know, being being a bossy facilitator. Carolyn. I really like the iceberg and I love the mosquito image. And I loved our beginning before lunch sessions, but it's really gone downhill. For me, because I felt like it became about people and people judging people that were not here. And, you know, so I really enjoyed the first part and I'm glad I was here. But um, I think it would have been nice to read all the things that people put because, yeah. Yeah, so the first it. part was great, but the second part, when we started talking about people not here and just really did not go well for me. Yeah, was uncomfortable and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
I think we need to be um, cognizant of that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other any other comments about how it went for you? Thank you for everyone who shared. I want to say uh, to Annie and Summer, thank you for coming back. I know this is not the norm to do two of these startups. And um, to everybody who came, I certainly appreciate your presence and your contributions. And to um, Rom, especially for um, supporting part two and the rest of the board. Thank you, Dr. Eckstein and Rom to you. I wonder if either of you have, you know, an aha or or a going away hmm, thinking that you would that you would want to share with this group. Um, I, I would like to uh, say my aha. I appreciated the Jamboard suggestions. Uh, the board is uh, does uh, uh, need to talk about the things that were brought up. Uh, about communication, about, uh, you know, disconnects. Uh, we have been talking about what we can do to help the congregation uh, know more about Joe Mosier's departure. Actually, we've talked quite a bit about that among the board, uh, at board meetings. It is a difficult uh, uh, topic to, to decide what would be a meaningful um, uh, so I, I would just say thank you again for bringing it up. Uh, it is on the board's minds, and we do need to communicate what we're, what we're, what we're thinking about there. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and again, just as um, Dr. XK mentioned, uh, I appreciate Summer, uh, Reverend Summer and Annie coming back uh, for, for round two. Uh, it was, I, yeah. I found it really valuable. Yeah, it's it's a I know I speak for both of us when I say it's an honor to be with you again. Dr. XK, thank you for your appreciation for all of us, including all of us. And I just wondered if you have any final thing you would like to share. I uh, sent in my appraisal of the uh, first six months of ministry of the interim ministry. I sent it to Ram and to MM to review before I sent in. And my overall appraisal was that we're doing quite excellently in most areas that uh, are on the appraisal form mm -hmm. and yeah I think we're doing we're doing quite quite good I think one thing that might be um, important to lift up is the, for people to know that the interim period is not really like a full full out ministry a full spectrum ministry like a, a settled ministry is so showing them the five categories of of uh, interim ministry, I think was very helpful, a helpful reminder for me, a helpful reminder to all of us of what we're what we're working on. So thank you for um, that recap. Yeah, thank you. And I see Carol and Bob have their hand up. Oh, I just my aha is that uh, I think this uh, long session was very very valuable. Yes. And I appreciate the agenda and the organization and uh, all that came up about uh, bias. And the, I mean, you just did a fantastic job of bringing out so much for us to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nika. Nika, perfect. That's what I was going to ask. Hi. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone for being here and being open and wanting to learn and grow, and myself included. Um, it means a lot. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm grateful that, you know, no matter where we are in life or where we live, situations that people are still open to learning at any stage. And I appreciate that. And it, um, thank you guys. That's all. Thank you, um, Annie and Summer and yeah. Dr. Escape for putting this all together. So it was very, I didn't know that I was going to actually be here today. And I sent out the invite again. I was like, I'm working. Let me just come in and listen. And then I came in. I'm like, okay. okay. I'll okay. Yeah. yeah. So thanks guys. That's great. Thank you for being here, Nika. And thank you to all of you for being here. And as we depart, 
I have the words of Janalu Johnstone. We shall overcome. We shall overcome when we can truly celebrate the diversity of contributions and talents offered by all people. We shall overcome hatred and prejudice and oppression. When we can truly extend our hands to one another in loving acceptance, we shall overcome the past that haunts us now. Living in peace and freedom, we shall overcome the wrongs that have happened and the debts left unpaid. Let us join together in that commitment to overcome. Let us say together, Amen. 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 Thank you. Blessings. So as our last act together, I would invite you all to unmute and say farewell to each other. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye. 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 Blessings. Bye. 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 Bye